Being able to describe what orbitals overlap to form the covalent bonds in a molecule is an important skill. Sigma bonds form from the overlap of a hybrid orbital from an atom and either an S orbital from a hydrogen or a hybrid orbital from another atom. So primarily sigma bonds are made up of S orbitals and hybrid orbitals. Pi bonds are made from the side to side overlap of a P orbital from each atom involved in the bond. Hybrid orbitals are never used to make pi bonds. In all cases, pi bonds are made by the overlap of P orbitals. Lastly, lone pair electrons are contained in hybrid orbitals. Now what we want to do is to describe what orbitals overlap to form the covalent bonds in this molecule. The first question I like to ask is, what's the hybridization on the atoms involved in the molecule? Because we're dealing with hybrid orbitals, the hybridization of the atoms are going to determine what hybrid orbitals we are using. The first question is, is what is the hybridization on oxygen? So once again, you count electron groups. A lone pair electron counts as an electron group. A double bond counts as one electron group. So the oxygen has one, two, three electron groups around it, so it is sp2 hybridized. The same thing is true for carbon. Carbon has one, two, three electron groups, so it is also sp2 hybridized. Next, I like to determine how many sigma and pi bonds does the molecule have. Remember, the orbitals that are going in to make sigma and pi bonds are going to be different. Remembering that a double bond is made up of a sigma bond and a pi bond, I can say that this molecule has one, two, three sigma bonds and one pi bond. And now we want to describe what orbitals overlap to form these bonds. The next question is, what two orbitals overlap to form the CH sigma bond? So we were discussing this bond, and this bond will have the same orbital overlap. Sigma bonds are made by the overlap of a hybrid orbital and an S orbital if we are involving hydrogen. So hydrogen is not really hybridized. Hydrogen is just a single S orbital. I know that the orbital overlap is going to be between a hybrid orbital and an S orbital from hydrogen. The question becomes, what hybrid orbital is going into the bond? This goes back to the hybridization on carbon. This carbon is sp2 hybridized, so it's, it uses sp2 hybridized orbitals to make its sigma bonds. So this CH sigma bond is made by the overlap of an S orbital from hydrogen and an sp2 hybridized orbital from the carbon. Next we'll find what two orbitals overlap to form the CO sigma bond. Remember the double bond is made up of a sigma bond and a pi bond. Each of these bonds are going to use different orbitals. This question is asking about a sigma bond and I remember that sigma bonds are typically made by the overlap of hybrid orbitals. So the question becomes what's the hybridization on the carbon and what's the hybridization on the oxygen? They are both sp2 hybridized. So they are both putting an sp2 hybridized orbital into the orbital overlap to form this CO sigma bond. So the bond is formed by an sp2 hybridized orbital from carbon and an sp2 hybridized orbital from oxygen. We knew this because both the carbon and the oxygen are sp2 hybridized. Then we can ask what two orbitals overlap to form the CO pi bond. This one is fairly easy because always pi bonds are made by the overlap of p orbitals. So really it's a question of what two atoms are involved in the pi bond. In this case, a carbon and an oxygen. Each atom is putting a p orbital into the orbital overlap to form this covalent pi bond. So a p orbital from carbon and a p orbital from oxygen overlap to form the CO pi bond. The last question is, is what orbital contains the lone pair electrons on oxygen? I remember that lone pair electrons are housed inside of hybrid orbitals. So the question becomes, what's the hybridization on the oxygen? We already know that it is sp2 hybridized. So each of these lone pair electrons must be contained by an sp2 hybridized orbital. Now we can take a closer look at how these orbitals overlap to form the molecule. Both the oxygen and the carbon are sp2 hybridized. That means that they will have three hybrid orbitals. These three hybrid orbitals will align themselves to form a trigonal planar geometry as predicted by Vesper. For the oxygen, two of these hybrid orbitals will go to contain the lone pair electrons 
one of these hybrid orbitals will go to make the CO sigma bond. The same is true for carbon. It is sp2 hybridized, so it has three sp2 hybridized orbitals. One of these orbitals will go in and overlap with the sp2 hybridized orbital from oxygen to form the CO sigma bond. The, the last two hybrid orbitals from carbon will overlap with an s orbital from hydrogen to form the CH sigma bonds. This will make the basic framework for our molecule. And so here we can see the CH sigma bond and the CO sigma bond. What remains is the pi bond. So after we've formed the sigma bonds, what remains is a p orbital on the carbon and a p orbital on the oxygen. These two orbitals overlap to form the CO pi bond. And so in the end, we get this molecule.